Adding a transverse scan in the ultrasound diagnosis of extensor tendinopathy. Longitudinal scan. When performing ultrasound examination of the common extensor tendon, the common extensor tendon should appear beneath the brachioradialis muscle as a hyperechoic, parallel, cord-like structure. In this procedure, the probe is moved slowly from radial side to ulnar side to scan through the tendon and observe the echogenicity and internal fibrillary contents of the common extensor tendon. Transverse scan. The transverse scan is performed with the probe placed transversely at the middle of the dorsal forearm. Five muscles can be identified going from the ulnar to the radial side. The extensor carpi ulnaris, ECU, extensor digiti minimi, EDM, extensor digiti communis, EDC, extensor carpi radialis brevis, ECRB, and extensor carpi radialis longus, ECRL. The EDM can be easily identified by having the patient move his or her fifth finger. The rest of the muscles are then sequentially identified by their relative positions to the EDM. Moving the probe proximally, one can see the oval-shaped EDM muscle fibers converge to form the eccentric EDM tendon, hiding beneath the EDC muscle. The ECU and ECRB muscles then converge to the ECU-ECRB tendon, beside the EDM tendon and below the EDC muscle. When the probe reaches the radial head, the annular ligament is appreciated as a thin, rainbow-like, hyperechoic structure wrapping around the radial head. After crossing the radiohumeral joint, the EDC muscle also converges to the EDC tendon. This joins the tendons of the previous four muscles to form the common extensor tendon, which then inserts to the lateral epicondyle. In the first case, the longitudinal view of the common extensor tendon showed focal hypoechoic change and a small slit-like anechoic gap at the tendon's insertion to the lateral epicondyle. However, the transverse view clearly demonstrated a wide tear occupying almost the entire ECRB tendon. Based on this finding, the physician postponed the patient's eccentric strengthening program to prevent further injury and allow healing to take place. In the second case, the longitudinal view of the common extensor tendon showed hypoechoic change in swelling at its insertion to the lateral epicondyle involving the entire length of the common extensor tendon. However, the transverse view revealed that the ECRB component was actually healthy, but the ECU component was hypoechoic, suggesting tendinosis mostly involving the ECU. Based on this finding, the therapist modified the patient's wrist movement to reduce excessive ulnar deviation, and the symptoms gradually resolved. Conclusion This novel sonographic approach allows the common extensor tendon to be completely stretched and centered in the ultrasound image. By employing this approach when examining tendon or muscle-related injuries around the lateral epicondyle, examiners can narrow down the cause of tennis elbow-like symptoms to pathologies of specific muscles that converge to the common extensor tendon. Precise modifications of wrist and hand activities can thereafter be suggested in clinic to prevent further injury.